excited to uh, get out here and uh, open up SEC play this week against a, a really, really, really good team. Um, uh, beat a really good Cincinnati team on Saturday. Uh, so many weapons uh, offensively. You just look at them with the quarterback and 245-pound quarterback and a 225-pound running back and a big physical offensive line. Um, I mean, they got a six foot nine offensive tackle out there. Uh, they're large, obviously, and then they got weapons also. I mean, the the tight ends a really good player. They got multiple backs. Uh, the receivers, both starting receivers, I've been with. Matt Landers was with us at Georgia, and uh, he's had a great career. Transferred in there and is doing a nice job for him. Jaden Hazelwood, we were I was with Jaden at Oklahoma. Uh, he's doing a great job uh, for him as well. So we've got a real challenge. And then, you know, defensively, just the it jumps off tape. The whole team, the effort they play with, the physicality they play with. But you watch them on defense, size up front, and uh, bumper pool, the linebacker, um, just a fabulous player, Drew Sanders. Uh, I remember the, who's the other linebacker for him now that transferred in from Alabama. I can remember being at Georgia and Drew was a freshman, I want to say, in high school. And we had him at camp in Georgia and knew that he was going to be an absolute freak uh, once he graduated. And that's what he was. We recruited the heck out of him at Oklahoma and were crushed when we didn't get him at Oklahoma. Uh, felt like he could be a guy that could play offense, defense, whatever he wanted at Oklahoma and went to Alabama. And now he's at Arkansas and, and then re a really good secondary also. So will be a big challenge for us. Sam Pittman has done a, an amazing job. Uh, there, uh, elevating that program since he came in. Ton of respect for Sam. Uh, even before we coached together at Georgia, always knew the, or heard the name Sam Pittman going back to when I was here at Carolina and we were recruiting Robert Quinn from Fort Dorchester and we lost him to North Carolina and the guy recruiting him was Sam Pittman. I remember thinking, how in the heck did the offensive line coach at North Carolina just get Robert Quinn to come to Chapel Hill? And um, he did, so knew of him then. and and then got the opportunity to work with him at Georgia, uh, learned so much from him. He was a huge help to me in my career when I got hired at Georgia by Kirby. I had never coached tight ends before in my life. I had coached defense here and coached running backs at Virginia Tech. Uh, so I was really, I was the special teams coordinator at Georgia, but I was also the tight ends coach. And I was very, you know, um, I was definitely a rookie there because I had never coached tight ends. And Sam helped me so much just uh, being the offensive line coach. The offensive line coach and the tight end coach worked very closely together. And he was very patient and taught me a lot about offensive line play. And tight end play and learn a lot from him. Got a ton of respect for him. We lived in the same neighborhood in, in Athens and he's a good friend and, and someone that I uh, always pull for. So happy for his success. And he's got a really good team that plays really, really hard and takes has taken on his personality. It'll be a big challenge for us Saturday. We know it's gonna be a great atmosphere uh, as well. I haven't been there in a while, but I've been there a bunch early on in my career, either at Mississippi State. Well, Mississippi State, we played them in Little Rock, but going back uh, when I was here at Carolina, and then I was thinking about it earlier. The first time I ever went out there was I was a GA at Tennessee in 2001, and that was the Saturday before the tragedy of 9-11. A few days later, that was the last home, or last game I was a part of before 9-11. We went out there on a Saturday night at Tennessee and won. I think we had a weather delay, and then 9-11 happened a few days later. So been a long time. Uh, I know they've made a bunch of improvements and enhancements to that stadium and excited to get out there. We've got to have a great week of practice and uh, give ourselves a, the opportunity to go out there and play well. Got off to a good start this morning and real quick injury wise, uh, no real updates. Christian Bill Smith practiced this morning. Expect him to go. Corey Rucker, I'd say, is very doubtful again this week. And then uh, uh, Ja'Kai Moore and RJ, Roderick, both, you know, I would say we're are questionable uh, for this week as well. Um, you know, we're waiting to get some results back on RJ. He's, he's, he's okay. Uh, just waiting to see kind of his pain tolerance as we go forward. But, you know, optimistic we'll, both, we'll see both those guys. But uh, they need to have a good day of practice tomorrow, and then we'll see what happens Saturday. So, Dave, what you got? Don't even have to ask anymore or say questions. Let's go to Dave. I was saying a couple. Um, uh, with Sherrod Green, is he okay? Sherrod Green? Yep. Yes, he's fine. Okay. And then with, when it comes to special teams coaching at practice every day, yeah. how much do you put your nose in there like during the daily drills and how much do you leave to Pete? Uh, I'd say I put my nose in everything. Um, and that's not trying to micromanage Pete. It's just what I've always done. 
Uh, but I would say, <coughs> excuse me, I would say um, with everything, David, um, defense, offense, special teams, I try not to micromanage out there, uh, but – uh, uh, I want to be involved in everything. I don't ever want to be one of those guys that's just on the defensive field or just on the offensive field. I try and bounce around. I try and during the week go to different meetings. I was in the DB meeting this morning and the offensive meeting and the linebacker meetings, just bounce around. But as far as that goes on the field, you know, Pete and Stanton, they work hard and put together a plan. And then every afternoon, so Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, I sit down with them. I mean, I watch everything on my own and – they watch everything on their own, and then we get together in the afternoons and kind of share thoughts. And a lot of times we're thinking the same thing. And uh, so before we go out there on the practice field, uh, I know exactly what we're doing. We've discussed it. Then we meet individually. Then we have a staff meeting each day. And then after the staff meeting, Pete has the coaches on our staff. Every coach is involved on special teams, except for really Sat and Clayton. Uh, every coach is involved. So we meet as a special team staff every afternoon after the main staff meeting. And then when we get out there on the practice field, every coach is coaching their, you know, individual positions, responsibilities. And then I, you know, try and bounce around and let those guys coach, let the guys play, but I'm certainly involved. But it's Pete's, you know, show. I mean, obviously offense, defense, special teams, I'm the head coach and oversee everything, but I've hired three really good coordinators and a great coaching staff. And we let, I let those guys coach. You, If Christian is able to go this week, just how vital will that be for this running game to have a guy that's just played a lot of ball seen a lot of stuff yeah for sure um just his experience his size that he brings um he's a downhill runner uh, that's produced at wake forest and, and and then had a lot of really really big games so we certainly could use his maturity and his experience but you know if not uh we got tons of confidence in marshawn obviously we've got tons of confidence in juju tons of confidence and you know jaheem bell carried the ball some last week as well so we'll have uh you know we'll We'll be ready to go, whatever. But getting CBS back would be, you know, awesome. Just added depth. He's a great special teams player as well, and uh, and then just the maturity he brings to that room. Uh, you were talking during camp about trying to simulate road situations, moving practices periods around, music, different things like that. How does that kind of translate into an actual road trip and getting ready for, especially an 11 a.m. kickoff out there? Yeah. Um, we try and do, you know, I think if you all of a sudden just wait till this week to start doing stuff, it's probably too late. You know, you mentioned it. I mean, a lot of the things that we've done since January has been trying to prepare us to uh, perform better on the road and, and play well on the road. And um, we'll certainly do some things this week also. You know, I mean, we practice in the morning, so 11 a.m. is right up our alley because, I mean, we're in the building every day before that and, and we're – you know, we're uh, uh, 11 a.m. is 12, 11 a.m. Central Time is 12 Eastern. So, I mean, we're basically done with practice every day by the time kickoff will be on Saturday. So, you know, um, there's positives and something, and, and I don't want to say negatives, but there's positives and some things that aren't positive about practicing in the mornings. But this is certainly a positive that we go in the mornings. And, you know, our last early kickoff was against North Carolina last year, and we played pretty dang good in that game. So just kind of building on that and looking at things to maybe do differently throughout the week and on the trip. But at the end of the day, whether you're home, away, 11 a.m., 11 p.m., full stadium, empty stadium, it doesn't matter. I mean, we talk about it. it it's, it's about us, and we, we control, you know, what happens. And we do that by preparing the right way having a great practice today and then coming back tomorrow and doing it again and then putting the pieces or putting the steps in place to then allow you to go perform well on Saturday. Hey, Shane. We've been hearing for years now that the most improvement is between game one and game two. Over the course of your career, is that really true? <laughs> and, and also, um, when you look at first game mistakes, are they mainly mental or physical? Uh, as far as the week one to week two, um, I'd say you uh, – I don't know if it's always accurate because we've won some week ones and lost some week twos. But I do think the it, it is the improvement that you're able to make because you finally, you finally play a game. You know um, – you really know what you need to correct. And maybe we thought we were – 
this was going to be something we were good at or whatnot, and maybe it's not quite what we thought or thought this guy would maybe handle this better, and he didn't. So you, you have a better idea about yourself, so I think you're better prepared going into week two than you are week one. It's You have a better understanding of how we do things. You know, you try and prepare the guys for uh, – what the hotel's like and what the pre the game day routine is like, but you don't actually do it do it for real real until game day. So now this week will be not the first time we've done it, uh, first time we've done it on a road. So you just have a better uh, understanding from that standpoint, uh, week one to week two, and and we we uh, we will be better than what we were last week, but we won't be as good as we hope to be. I mean, we're constantly improving on this. Uh, 12 guaranteed game opportunity, and this is the uh, this is the next step. And then, as far as the mental and physical, I'd say a little bit of both, Rick. I mean, there were some uh, um, there were some uh, just offensively and defensively. There were some mental mistakes the other night. You know, one of the uh, one of Georgia State's long runs that popped out of there was a mental error on the defense. We had. A miscommunication on calls. One guy thought one thing. One guy thought another thing. We we're playing a couple different things, and a run spit out of there for an explosive run in the fourth quarter. That's mental. Um, you know, we lost contain on the quarterback one time uh, because you know a, a, an edge player for us uh, rushed, and instead of keeping his outside arm free, kind of lost his outside arm, and the quarterback scooted out of there. To me, that's physical. Offensively, we got the. You know, quarterback got pressure one time because they brought the corner and we didn't block it like we were supposed to, and we got an unblocked player back there. That's mental. We had an issue where you know uh, uh, somebody got beat on the at wide receiver tight end out in space on the perimeter blocking. That's physical, you know. So both to answer your question, and uh, we've got to coach better and play better this week. There's no doubt about it in all three phases because as good as special teams were, there's a lot to clean up on special teams as well. Um, you talked about Marshawn's impact with CBS being out. You know, you guys go to him for both those offensive touchdowns yeah. on Saturday. You know, why is he kind of the the go to guy in those clutch moments for this offense right now? I think he, um, you know, one knows what to do and and can execute and and whatnot. And then I think a lot of that Emily is just he was happened to be in there at the at the right time too. You know, I mean he. Uh, uh, if he, if it had been Juju or somebody out wide on that touchdown pass, he would have gotten the ball thrown to him because, you know, go back to mental, physical. I'm assuming Georgia State wanted somebody to buzz out to the flat to handle that and, and didn't. Um, and Marshawn, Spencer found him. And then Marshawn's a guy, having said that, that can, when the ball's in his hands, good things happen and he can make people miss. We hit the third and 16 for like a 15-yard gain right before the half. We went tempo. We actually went for it on fourth and one and, you know, would love to keep that thing a little bit north-south, but he bounced it outside and broke three tackles. You know, that's a great individual effort. But Marshawn's a guy that we have a lot of confidence in because he's a weapon with the ball in his hands. But uh, I could also say that about the other, some of the other running backs and some of the receivers and tight ends as well. So we want to have multiple um, go-to guys, if you will, in those moments. A couple of things on linebackers. Um, <clears throat> what kind of personality is is Mo Kaba? He had the the tweet over the summer about mowing lawns and not getting NIL deals. But how how does his personality benefit him in the in the position group? And then also on on Sherrod, he's had some significant injuries. I know you said he's fine, but have those injuries in the past slowed him down a little bit to where he isn't really the same player as he was prior to the hip and the knee? Um, as far as Mo, he's a great. Um, personality those um the he, he's fun to be around the thing I've seen with Mo is just his maturity the way that it's grown in just a year and a half or whatever that I've been here um he uh he, he really works he really studies you know I'll be in those linebacker meetings with coach white and he's right near coach white sitting in the front row and and he's very locked in to what he's doing and and uh that's a very like old I don't want to say old soul, but that's there's some young guys in that linebacker room, but it's some mature older guys, you know, Brad and Sherrod and Mo and and Debo. He's only his second year in the program, but he's a very he's a very um, mature you know guy 
for a young guy. I mean, we, we laugh. We always go from special teams meetings each morning. Then we go from the special teams meeting to position meetings, offense, defense. And everybody goes straight to the meetings except the linebackers. And it's like seven linebackers are in the kitchen back there in line to get a cup of coffee before they go into the linebacker meeting room. Like, no other position does that. But it's literally Sherrod's getting his cup of coffee. Brad's getting his cup of coffee. They're all in there getting their coffee like they're going to work in there. Donovan Westmoreland goes in there, and I'll put, like, seven sugars in there and stuff. I mean, it's insane. But that's just kind of that linebacker group. It's a very mature group. And um, Mo's leadership and, and – and Sherrod's leadership and Brad's leadership, I think, have allowed guys like Debo and guys like Stone Blanton to come in there as a true freshman the other night and perform well when he got in there. And then in regards to Sherrod, I mean, I'd, I think it'd be crazy to say that when you have injuries like that, that it doesn't affect you to a certain degree mentally and physically. But Sherrod's worked really, really hard to get himself back. He shows He has shown how important football is to him that he could get hurt like he did against Georgia and then come back again and still be playing, you know, at, at, at somewhat a high level. And, and uh, Mo and Brad started the other night because they had earned it. It wasn't necessarily a knock on Sherrod. They had earned it and had a good preseason camp. But, you know, Sherrod uh, is a guy that we have a lot of confidence in um, and, um, you know, expect him, excuse me, as we go through this season to have a, uh, a really productive year for us. Shane, a couple for you. Um, not to give away state secrets, but at that staff special teams meeting, are there weeks when after watching film you say, you know what, we think we can get a couple of – a block or two here, or we think it's good, you know, maybe for this fake, we can run this fake and try and do that. Are there some weeks – did it feel like that last week? And also, are you going to have to call Kerry Tharp at Darlington to see if you can drive the pace car? Yeah, I saw that. Don Don got to, and I didn't, right? The problem is I can't go during the season, and then the spring race is Mother's Day, and I'm going to have a hard time with Emily saying we're going to Darlington for the race because I'm driving the pace car today, but it's Mother's Day. She would let me, but I just feel bad. you got to – you kind of got to tread lightly on that. And I haven't, I haven't gotten to the point where I feel like I can make that call. And Kerry's been great. He's invited me to come over there the last two springs. Um, he hasn't made the invite yet for the pace car, so I'm waiting on that one, Kerry. Um, but he did invite me to come to the race. I think this past year, I want to say we were getting ready to go to Phoenix for an event, and I couldn't. Uh, and then the year before was Mother's Day. So hopefully soon, and I do want to get to Darlington. That's the one. I've been to a bunch of racetracks for NASCAR races. Believe it or not, I've never been to Darlington, so I do want to go. Uh, and then as far as those meetings, uh, yeah, I'd say every single week we are looking at ways to steal a possession, whether it be fakes or whatever it may be. There are certainly some weeks – or block punts, whatever. There are certainly some weeks that you feel – uh, better about it than other weeks, um, but we always want to have the uh, the the ability, you know. And a lot of that is depending on how the game is going. But we always want to have the ability in all phases of special teams to be the aggressor, I will, and and uh, and attack. Whether we're the ones kicking or whether we're the ones returning or trying to block. But certainly, there's some weeks where you feel better about it. And and this was a week that. With our looking back at last week, we felt like with Georgia State in regards to the field goal specifically, and then the uh, you know the block punts uh, felt like um, pump pressure wise that we had an opportunity if we just played with good technique to potentially make something happen in that phase, whether it be in the return game or the block game. And I'm proud too because we had some good returns. When you're a better rush team, that makes you better as a return team because people are worried about getting punts blocked, so they either got to keep extra people in in protection or they really got to stay in longer in order to protect, which therefore makes it better for now you to return that punt because we talk about our players, it's really the longest play in football if you think about it. It takes from snap to punter two seconds to get the ball off. If the punter's any good, it's going to be in the air four or five seconds. So right now you're talking seven seconds before the catch, the returner even catches the ball and then however long it takes. So, I mean, you're talking about a play that's anywhere from 12 to 15 seconds. Um, and the more that teams are worried about protecting, 
that makes it easier on Josh Van and our returners back there because there's not as many people down there and you can get some returns going. That's why my dad was so good on special teams because they were so good at blocking. People were worried about that. And next thing you know, they were turning on for touchdowns. And then, then you're trying to get more people out in coverage to keep them from returning on for touchdowns. And now you're blocking punts again. So that's what we want to be at all times. Sorry, I went on a special teams like Spiel right there. Um, but yes, we always feel good about it. We always want to be aggressors on special teams. And, and we felt good about in regards to the punt and then the field goal uh, that if Georgia State lined up the way they we thought they would, and they don't always do that, but we were hoping they would, and they did, and we were able to take advantage of it on the field goal. Shane, you may not want to say who is actually mimicking KJ Jefferson, but is there a way to actually mimic a guy who's no. 6'3", 240, or whatever no, he is? there's not. Um, to be that big, but, you know, to um, be able to – just people just bounce off of him back there and – you know, the way that he's able to, uh, in the run game, run the football uh, like he does, but then also in the passing game to be able to sit back there and, and take hits and throw the ball downfield or to have people bounce off of him. He's able to scramble, but he keeps his eyes downfield and he's able to throw. No, I mean, we don't – we'd have to take, I don't know who, some one of our defensive ends, you know, and make him a quarterback. Uh, you know, for us, it's just emphasizing – 11 hats to the ball and gang tackling and, and getting people around him. And let's do a good job of, you know, understanding their schemes and being in the right place, being in the right gaps, and then uh, rally to them because it's going to take, you know, all 11 to rally to that ball to get him down. And all their guys, not just him. I mean, when you talk about the backs that are 220-plus pounds as well that can carry the football, that's a uh, – it's a problem. I mean, the other day against Cincinnati, Cincinnati scores to cut it to seven – Arkansas gets the ball back with six and a half minutes left and runs out the clock. Like Cincinnati doesn't get the ball back again. Arkansas just takes six and a half minutes off the clock because Cincinnati couldn't get a stop. So um, we've got to do a great job this week, without a doubt. Correct me if I'm wrong. Were, were you on the staff when you went to Arkansas and Darren McFadden went for like 340 <laughs> yards? Sorry, I know that's not the most Thanks. fun memory, but <laughs> yeah. Thanks. No, I was. I think that was uh, my first year, 2007. Um, 2007. Yeah. McFadden, uh, Peyton Hillis. And that was Felix uh, Felix Jones. Yeah, I think they each ran for like 500 yards apiece. My favorite memory of that game is I'm coaching defense. And uh, I was coaching defense and special teams. And I'm a young coach. It's my first year on the staff. I mean, I kind of – I'm coaching defense, but I'm taking a back seat to the older coaches on that defensive staff. And I'll never forget – this was after they've gone up and down the field on us and – the, I don't want to name names, but the defensive coordinator is on the field, and he's talking to one of the coaches in the press box. This is like second quarter. Or no, actually, I think it's early first quarter, and we can't stop them. It's obvious. And the defensive coordinator is talking to one of the coaches in the box, and the coach in the box is like, hang on a second. Just don't say anything. I'm up here drawing. And the coordinator is like, you're up here drawing? He's like, yeah, I'm putting together a plan here that we can do some stuff to try and stop them. And I'm like, oh, crap. Like, if we're up here drawing stuff up on paper right now in the middle of the first quarter, we're in for a long night. And we were. Uh, that was a long night in Fayetteville. And hopefully uh, hopefully we play a lot better defensively than what we did that night. David remembers those nights. <laughs> or that night. <laughs> yeah, at least. I think they ran for like 700 as a team or something. Yeah, Coach, uh, going back to Jefferson, you mentioned, uh, of course, his size makes it hard for him to bring down. But, of course, the, I guess, running scheme as a whole, yeah. you know, Raheem Sanders back there. Um, how much of that do you think is, you know, just how difficult it is to bring those players down and how much of it is the line play? Like, just kind of what makes that rushing attack so yeah. uh, effective for them and maybe difficult to defend also? Yeah, they do, a, they do a great job. Did you have a question on that or were you just – Yeah, unfortunately, I do. So, sorry. I've <laughs> – you asked me, and it was like a, a mental, like automatically, like it takes me back to that night. That was a long night, uh, but yeah, we, um, we, uh, that was tough. That was tough. Um, but yes, I was on that staff. Thank you. And uh, um, I think we went out there two years later. That was an afternoon game. I think we won in nine out there. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. They faked a the field goal, or they faked a the punt against us. I remember that over there on our sideline, and we got to stop their run scheme. Um, no, they do a great job coaching, for one. You know, Sam's an offensive line guy. You see that when you watch them play. They're big. They're physical. Uh, they, they, with their size up front, they're able, to, they're able to cover people up. 
you know, you watch that Cincinnati game and I'm watching the end zone copy yesterday and, you know, the ball snap and you pause it after a second and you can't like see any of the Cincinnati defense alignment on tape because they're covered up by double teams. Um, and then there's just gaps for the running back and the quarterback to run through. So they do a great job coaching technique and fundamentals, but then they do a great job schematically as well. The offensive staff, uh, the, the, they use tempo. So you got to be able to handle that. Um, they'll get in multiple formations. They've got motions. They've got, you know, um, uh, ways to you, – you've got to be disciplined with your eyes against these guys because they're big and physical, but now they're also going fast also. And, uh, you know, they'll be in they'll be in empty and the quarterback's running it or they'll be in a regular conventional set and here comes motion and, and whatnot. They do a great job. I think their receivers do a fantastic job of blocking on the perimeter. You watch Jefferson's first run on Saturday for a touchdown and uh, it's either Landers or Hazel Woods over there on the sideline. I mean, just – kicks the DB's butt, you know, for Cincinnati uh, to allow Jefferson to get in the end zone. So they do a great job on the perimeter uh, also. And then they just got, you know, they got weapons. They got the other quarterback, number four, that's a world-class track guy, I think, that's a blazer when he comes in with his speed, and then he can throw it. Uh, they do. They have different ways of getting him the ball. Um, so they're just a, they're a real challenge, starting with their size, but they're well coached, and then they're just they're very multiple. You know, last week uh, there wasn't a lot of formations that you were going to get from Georgia State. This week you're going to get a lot of formations, and then a lot of stuff happening within those formations too. I know how guys came in as recruits and all that stuff's largely irrelevant to you guys once 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 they get here but there are several guys who, who made plays uh saturday night who were you know late ads or didn't have a ton of offers like amos gil mm -hmm. redmond uh dq yeah what, what does that say about guys like that who come in and and uh kind of earn their way a little bit more than maybe some people might think yeah I think a couple out. things one you go back to the process I think it says that we're not going to staff it's going to get caught up in who else is recruiting them or how many offers they have uh, I don't care we don't care you know we watch the tape or have them in camp and if we think they're good enough and have the ability to develop uh, we'll take them so I, I want to commend like our coaching staff and the recruiting staff for for um, um being willing to offer those guys and recruit them because we believed in them. And then two, it says a lot about them as well. Like we want guys in this program that love to compete, guys that love football. And those guys do, a lot of them. And um, I think when you come in and maybe you don't have the stars or the rankings of other guys, you maybe have a little bit more of a chip on your shoulder or edge and, and kind of out to, out to prove yourself. And uh, – uh, you know, DQ and Nick, I mean, those guys, they love football. They love to compete. Uh, Gilbert is a guy that, you know, has sat behind some guys the first couple of years, and it's his time. Like, he needs to continue to elevate himself defensively and special teams. Rashad's a guy that, you know, proud of him. It would have been very easy. He goes through preseason practice, and he's not one of the top two running backs going into this season. But didn't, had some games last year where he didn't travel with us. He wasn't one of our 70 that we're able to take to SEC away games would have been easy to, you know, pack his ball, take his ball and pack up his stuff and go somewhere else. And he didn't. Like, he stayed here and continued to compete and and has matured off the field and then put himself in positions, in a position to make plays on the field, special teams, and then more and more offensively as we go. So, proud of those guys. Says a lot about them, for sure. <clears throat> hey, Shane, have you seen a heightened sense of urgency from the guys since SEC play is starting this week? And then also, how confident are you in Nick that he'll be able to step up if RJ is unable to go at safety? Yeah, uh, I think automatically there's going to be a heightened, uh, heightened sense of urgency. There better be. I mean, we're in the SEC play here pretty quick. Uh, and uh, going on the road against a nationally ranked opponent to open up SEC play, uh, you better have that urgency for sure. So our guys know, and, and again, each, each and every week we talk about us and it's about us and, and try not to prepare differently for Arkansas than what we did Georgia State. And they're all, you know, other coaches use it, but it's true, just nameless, faceless opponents and let's worry about us. But when you're going on the road in the SEC, it's different. Uh, let's be real. And our guys know that. And, 
and the energy and spirit at practice this morning certainly reflected that. And then in regards to uh, Nick, yeah, I have confidence. Uh, Torian and Clayton will do a great job, you know, getting him uh, getting him ready. I mean, he walked, he stepped in the other night, and and I want to say uh, I was talking to Luke and Luke Day this morning about it. I th- I want to say Nick played more snaps when you take his defensive snaps and special teams than any player on the team the other night. I mean, he was out there a bunch, and. Uh, um, he did well. Now, just because it happened last week doesn't mean it's going to happen this week. And we've got to do a great job of getting him ready to go again and maybe even more of a prominent role. You know, Arkansas has tape on him now. Georgia State really didn't know much about him. So Nick will be fine, all those guys. And it's not just Nick. There's a lot of guys that will be playing their first road game this week. There's a lot of guys that uh, haven't been in a stadium you know, like this, uh, that that have been in college football for a while. Juice Wells, I don't know if think Juice Wells played in a stadium like he's going to play in Saturday when he was at James Madison. So we got to do a great job of, you know, hand, worrying about what we can control, preparing ourselves, and at the end of the day, realize it's about us. Um, you've had a couple of guys, you know, defending that O-line on social media the last couple of days. You had a couple of guys come in here today say today was the best practice that they've had all season so far. You know, where is the atmosphere and the morale of the locker room right now coming into week two? As high as it's been, um, sky high. I mean, were there parts Saturday night that um, didn't look great? Sure. I think there's a lot of teams across the country that can – that can say that, but at the end of the day, we didn't play well. It really, we didn't play well overall in a lot of areas, in my opinion, and we still beat a team that's gonna compete for the championship in their conference by three touchdowns. And the game was in control the entire fourth quarter. Um, so a lot to correct on. Nobody's walking around patting ourselves on the back about Saturday night, but uh, we know what the issues are. We know the group of guys that we have in that locker room, and uh, there's no issues with uh, anything besides getting ready to play or getting ready to, to go play Arkansas and, and be the very best we can be. So now our guys are excited and I don't worry about them, you know, whatever the noise is out there. And, uh, it is what it is, but that's just part of, you know, you're either every Saturday you're judged on 12 Saturdays and we uh, certainly need to be better this Saturday than what we were last. Thank you, Coach. Thank you guys. Have a good week. Thank you all.